Hello everyone, let's get into our seats. We're on the messy plane ride once again. Once again, and we're going to be talking about someone we've always talked about. And that's Portia Williams, y'all. Yes, honey, I'm going to take you way back, way back on when. I don't, it wasn't season five when they came on, her and Kenya Moore. It might have been season six or seven. But I know y'all remember this. Y'all remember Carlos King in the house. Yes, and he was um, one of the producers on the show. And Kenya and all her glory. And, and Kenya was a bitch back then. I don't care what nobody said. <laughs> Kenya was a true villain bitch. Okay, because anybody in their right mind. And I don't know. I, I just don't understand how the women. It couldn't have been Nene over there on that couch. And I'm surprised that Cynthia would have been sitting there so domicile. And letting Kenya reach over her with that scepter. I mean, I'm like, come on. I would have snatched that scepter and took it to Ann and said, y'all got to act right. We women up in here. Y'all ain't going to be using these damn props. This is just too much. Hell, and they, uh, let me sit on the side because if they get to fight, I'm going to sue somebody up in this camp. I'm going to tell you that right now. And, honey, they went crazy because Bertha riding with me on this plane trip again. And we are, like, high in the altitudes. And we kiki and hollering and laughing together because Bertha said she ain't here for the shits. Kenya came for the shits. She played her part remarkably well. And she was doing too much. And somebody, really, Andy Cohen, if anybody, would have been able to stop it. He should have stopped it. But, see, that's why he do his black panelists. You know, he won't them to do as much degradation to their sales and to their careers in this reality field. And he just sit back and let it watch. And he just be thinking, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I know those ratings are going to be off the roof. I'm going to go buy me this, that. That's how he's thinking as he's watching these black women make a totally hilarious fool out themselves. Because, for one, Andy should have got that damn bullhorn, as you can see, pictured there. And should have got that scepter and said, no ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am, no sort, no Lord, no God. You are not bringing that shit up in here. It could be cute for maybe a few seconds, but you need to put that shit down. Okay, put it down. You ain't on nobody's chariot. You ain't looking down at the peasants. And, you know, no ma'am, we're not. We're grown. So you, if you can't verbally get her together, you shall not be bringing no scepter, no bullhorn, or the hell no horse up in here. Okay, and that's how we would have played that. But Andy failed at his job. And if anybody should have got reprimanded, it should have been him as well as Portia. And y'all, I don't know. I forgot that part or something. But the reason why I'm taking y'all back way back when. Okay. It's because um, I was just finishing up Portia's book. Because remember I said I wasn't going to be doing anything else on it. Because it was about the Black Lives, uh, Black Lives Movement phase she was going into after chapter Eight. And I said, mm, what are these other pages, you know, about? Because I had time on my hands. You know, it's Friday night. I, you know, I'm washing my clothes and everything. Get myself together. Um, and um, I just was, you know, because I was trying to put her book on the um, bookshelf. To call it as, you know, it is like it was done over with. And, you know, if anybody else wanted to borrow it from me. Uh, I would say, yeah, kind of come, come, come get this baby. Come get this mess. Because, uh, and make sure you bring it back to me now. Because, um, you know, I just like books anyway. I'm an I'm a avid reader and whatnot. And um, this was a very big disappointment. <laughs> but I knew that. I knew that prior to purchasing the book. That's why I said I was going to definitely give y'all a spill of what I had uh, found out in this book. And, you know, make some of my money back. If it ain't nothing but the $13 or, t or really was like 19 something with the tax included. Make my $20 back. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I ran into um, another chapter that she talks about her uh, failed marriage and that it had ended and how she had gave Cordell all of her, all of her in a sense. Uh, and she had to start over and, you know, the Real Housewives of Atlanta was a catalyst to doing just that. And um, it was, I think it was this, um, chapter 9, but it talks about her being on the Housewives and how she let Kenya bully her and put her in a position where she had to put hands on Kenya. Or she had to stop Kenya and all her 
messy ways and i'm like Seth, you see i said you're sitting up there looking i mean right there hearing all that that's a bullhorn that you would have like outside cheering somebody on or you're pretty much giving direction where you want people to go that kind of mess you know that shit is loud as hell and me at my age now 54 <laughs> you can sneeze the wrong way and i might cuss you out you know what i'm saying especially if i'm in my my bedroom or i'm in the room by myself and i'm just giving my woosa moment or whatever child you might get cussed out because i don't know it just seems like i can't stand a lot of nonsense <laughs> no more but honey carlos king i don't know if he instigated the fight or he told kenya she can bring them props up in now but i know i would have been on kenya ass if i was sitting up there on that couch and she was going back and forth with that surf uh, that scepter and that bull huh but i would have snatched the shit out of her hand and went and and say production production product come get this shit come get it right now before i i Put it on her head or put it against her body somewhere and that's me me using it as a weapon okay so if y'all don't do nothing about it which just don't seem like y'all want to and i'm agitated i'm gonna do something about it and i ain't gonna be sued i ain't going to jail because it was y'all who set up there and let this uh mess go on like this no other housewives franchise have to go through this but y'all finna let the black ones go through this and with this woman i'm fussing with that's losing her damn mind by bringing these props up in here Okay, but Kenya understood the assignment. <laughs> she wanted to bring her drama and drama she bought. Okay, so she get an A for effort and for uh, what we call it, solidifying the task at hand. Okay, she got up under her her um her skin, but little did she know that she was gonna get dragged across that flow, hair and all, hair body and all. Or co- I should say hair body and soul, because Portia Show kept a good grip on that. She didn't necessarily. She probably wanted to put paws on that face and everything else, but she probably said, "Oh Lord, what have I done? I'm just gonna hold on to her hair because she deserves it." And then I need to think about how I'm gonna get my ass out of this situation because I didn't. I just like I had a, I had a body experience. I didn't see myself going for her lunging and then grabbing her piece of hair. I didn't see that. Lord, how did I get? him <laughs> that's probably what was playing around in her head at the time but anyway we're gonna go into this situation that Portia under- understands in her book prior to her last chapter which talks about the black lives movement she goes in to say she has to take responsibility of her part that she played uh with somebody being a bully towards her and i did read in the book Earlier on when Portia was a child and her um, brother were out somewhere and some girl didn't like her or whatever. She was getting her ass beat and her brother was looking at the girl beat her ass. And I was like, well, it depends on what the brother saw Portia do or maybe not do. Uh, He was pretty pissed poor as a brother too because I would start fighting him. After I got up from the girl whooping my ass, I would probably been trying to fight my brother getting some licks off of him because he was supposed to be protecting me. Now, if he didn't protect her because Portia was mouthing off or whatever, then yeah, let the chips roll where they may because she shouldn't have been open her mouth. But to bring a long story short, the child had got her ass whooped and she was up on the girl was on top of her and whooping her ass, you know, and you know, her brother was in a uh, crowd. Everybody was cheering the girl on for beating up Portia. And um, he was like being the ringleader or the ring announcer, uh, Portia's brother was. And then he said, okay, that's enough. She TK'd, oh, you done knocked her out. And then the street lights came on. And I don't know if you ever been in the black persuasion, uh, Caucasian people or Asian people, whoever's listening to me that's not black on my platform. When the street lights came on, that was a very good indication that you needed to take your ass home quickly, fast, and in a hurry, okay? I mean, make it there before that door opens and your mama come out with that switch or that bill. And if she had to come out that driveway, you knew you were getting it. But if you got in that driveway before she came out that door, you would say you probably would have got slept outside your head as you entered in the door. Or you would have got something verbally told to you that we won't put on. (laughs) <laughs> we probably won't, we won't put on my show okay but that was a very strong indication when them lights came on you better be where they can see you coming up the walkway the streetway where well, technically you really needed to be in the house period but sometimes we got a little interested in our comings and goings me and our friends or you know whatever we were doing at the time and 
you know, we just got uh, lost a track of time. You know what I'm saying? But it was just a really good instinct and a good, um, what do you call it, alarm in a sense. That when those street lights came on, everybody knew where they needed to be. It's almost like we were controlled by some mechanical thing or something. Uh, <laughs> but that's why the girl got off of Portia and the fight ended. Because she was just bashing Portia head in. Uh, ribs in and everything but once them lights flickered on she got up off that girl and um i pretty much said i know you don't had enough or whatever you know a little banter we do when we get to fight us the ones that really be whooping our ass be still talking shit and we just be wanting them to go away <laughs> just gonna go away now uh so we can run but uh yeah the girl got out of her and they dispersed as children and went their their merry words to their prospective homes or houses or whatever okay but uh she goes on to say about kenya's situation on what happened on the bravo set with her basically losing control and her emotions and attacking kenya when in a sense kenya was really attacking her but it was more so verbally and with props and you know of course if you don't lost your cool all this stuff comes for uh, a distraction and like i said cynthia could have stopped all of that she could have just snatched the shit from um kenya or she could have said nicely kenya that's not nice uh what you're doing is you know it's, it's, we, we shouldn't be doing it as women could you please put up the props because right now I'm, I'm scared Portia may lose her mind and while she's snatching it from you it might hit me and it's going to be a misunderstanding on y'all's part because I'm going to sue y'all <laughs> I'm going to make sure I got something uh, a whiplash or y'all don't traumatize me or something to that degree but I'm going to tell y'all up front I'm going to sue y'all okay and I might get a hold of Bravo and then I don't have to be a part of this ratchet show at all but uh, Cynthia was just looking there between looking at them uh, both simultaneously and pretty much looking at uh, Kenya like what you gonna do girl what you gonna do put that shit down put that you know like she was just uneasy and she was just locked in stiff mode and couldn't move i'm like something has always been piss poor on this show and I, I i was wondering how she was faring over at big brother because i heard they lost a contestant that went home early during the taping and <laughs> it's just gonna be a debacle man up a show and i'm pretty sure when cynthia gets let go it'll be something for me to talk about but anyway um going back to the article i mean the article the book it said uh portia uh mentions i came out of character at the reunion and it regretfully taught me to never give my power to a bully again. Although I've always regret what happened and how she triggered me to step all the way out of my character. It also revealed to me the power of authenticity. Okay, now, again, we're in Portia Williams' book, The Pursuit of Portia. How I Grew Into My Power and Purpose. And she's supposed to have been real transparent when it came to the people she was going to talk to even though she did specify she's going to leave some people uh names out due to you know they didn't want to really know be a part of you know her shenanigans probably in her book but as we know i had did another piece on portia uh leaving um kenya out when it was something that she had like pretty much embarrassed kenya when she was introducing her to a large platform of people had come out to uh, celebrate uh, the life and legacy of uh, Jose Williams, her grandfather. And she had this uh, dysfunction at her grandpa late grandfather's home. And Bravo was filming and stuff. But, of course, Miss Portia called her Miss America when she was Miss USA. And um, that set the tone for things to go south um, later on in the taping. And they never... Well, Kenya never probably forgave her for that. And that's one of the scenes where she was um, at the Jose Williams uh, home at the time. So I did try to put, you know, a few video, I mean, a few visual clips in there where her and uh, Kenya was talking on the outside. And she was kind of, you know, upset and, and, and really drilling Portia for, you know, all she could other than hitting her about you know mispronouncing her title and trying to make her feel embarrassed and this that and the third and you know Portia gonna try to spin it saying you know you're trying to act up at my grandfather's you know charity celebration and and legacy and you know the spot's not on you it's on me and my you know family's organization you know stuff like that Portia trying to switch it over even though Portia should have took full responsibility of that 
and um, played it differently, but she didn't. But uh, she left Kenya Moore out of this again. And I'm like, girl, you can't talk about people that you're definitely going to be filming with still. And you sit there, write a book, and you just excerpt them out like they never appeared in this book like we don't know who you're talking about so that's the chapter that i'm in again with another um piece of the puzzle she was trying to put together like she's a uh, a well channeled woman now she knows who she is let her war she's a warrior type situation but she's not put together well uh she is falling apart and this book was a travesty but like i said she could have mentioned Kenya's name but maybe she didn't want to give Kenya those accolades which or she didn't want to fuss with Kenya about putting her name into something that was detrimental and Kenya would probably seek litigation against her for maybe defamation of character or whatever so that's may, maybe why she left her name out but you know just what I'm saying it, once you read it you know quickly and instinctively that she is talking about this person which is Kenya Moore okay or can y'all say Kenya Ken Summers Moore or key more hair care all right but then going uh, back to the book quoted by her she said i paid a price for that decision at that reunion i served i was served with an arrest warrant charged with misdemeanor battery and even had to take a mug shot the most fabulous mug shot that you've ever seen thank you very much most importantly, the audience saw a real breakdown. I lost my peach that next season and received a pay cut. But I didn't let that stop me from being transparent in front of the cameras. Okay. I struggled in front of millions of people. But because I allowed them to see what I was, a real woman capable of making impulsive decisions, the audience didn't turn on me. They fell in love with me. Okay. So what she's pretty much saying, what Kenya meant for her downfall really was her come up in a sense and i'm like i'm still trying to figure that one out yes they gave you grace and all the reason why i think they gave you grace because you didn't hit her only thing you did do was grab her and put her to the floor and uh quickly everybody just well they were trying to separate y'all anyway carlos king and um and what little part he did play in trying to do that but andy could have actually resolved it all by taking those props from kenya you know, they basically could have came on stage and we were going to see what she was going to do with them uh, because the fight didn't break out until like the middle part. It wasn't at the first beginning. So Andy should have secured those props from Kenya quick, fast and in a hurry and let them sit by him or take them, took them off stage so they can go on and do what they felt they needed to do. And you see, I said they're trying to move on out the way when she should have been taking a sip to herself okay that that long thing because who knows if it would have flipped out of kenya hand and hit somebody for real hell hit andy you know what i'm saying what if they really did get the fight you know kenya was about their life she didn't care about her facial appearances or anything she was just like come come with it you swing i'm swinging you know what i'm saying and uh at that time i'm pretty sure portia would have swung <laughs> but you know they got them kind of separated and whatever and the only thing that really came out of it was that kenya was you know pulled to the floor uh and you know Porsche wouldn't let her hair go but uh yeah i that's the part i didn't know i thought they had settled it or whatnot i didn't know police was actually called and if i know kenya moore kenya moore went for the hardest charges you could probably press on a person because you know Porsche made her look stupid she did have her pen down and you know she wanted everything out on Porsche that she probably can get for the negative but only thing she did was you know ain't like Portia was going nowhere so i don't know why an arrest warrant was wish issue but i guess if you call <coughs> the popo and you make a statement uh and they have to follow through with it i guess you would have to get that arrest warrant as well as um be charged with that crime because it could have been an assault charge because that really wasn't an assault charge but i guess they talked kenya more down and probably Paid her some, you know, money or whatnot, hush money, and to her satisfaction. And taping resumed, or, you know, well, taping resumed anyway after the incident. But, um, you know, they were able to keep things intact and nothing really was going to be, no litigation really was going to be taking place. So, I was like, Lord, now see, I didn't know that child. I mean, I know she, well, no, I thought there was more so when I saw her arrest with her 
how they had arrested her because she went like full glam and they didn't have no markers in behind of her saying her height and i you know it, it, it was nothing you know like she was in handcuffs and the orange you know jumpsuits and stuff it was just a pretty picture like she could have took you know at oh what do you call those people Oh, I can't remember those people that used to take school pictures. Oil and meals. Oil and meals. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If y'all had kids that grew up uh, in elementary and y'all used to have those school pictures taken every year. Uh, once you got back in school. I think it was around the fall time too. But anyway. Um, yeah. She had a picture taken like that. There wasn't no real mug shot. I was like, boy. The, the uh, lead way they give celebrities. And they don't get everyday hard working people those kind of chances that's a hot mess but i just wanted to bring y'all back i bring y'all a, a bad uh blast from the past and i said she had brought it up in her book and things and i gotta read one more excerpt to y'all it won't be on this video but honey i gotta read to y'all when she met samuel jackson and she thought she had hit gold street and when she first met Dennis McKinley, and she knew he was the one, child. Everybody's the one in po Portia's world. Everybody is the one. If they got money, and they want to be fooling with her, and she want to fool with them, th that's her, her person. Because <laughs> she done went through too many men just in this book alone. That she probably had a plethora of more men to talk about. But she only felt she needed to cast these in her uh, pages of her book. Because I'm like, girl, how many men are you going to say they were the one? They was the one God had chosen for you and all this stuff. That's blasphemy around here. Like, baby, no, that's who you chose. That's who you chose. And from the looks of it, the um part that I did read about her first meeting Dennis McKinley, it seemed like their first real date. She slept with him, y'all. Mm-hmm. I won't know until... Well, only thing it did say they had went to dinner pretty much, and he took her back to his place, uh, which y'all know that industrial type uh, apartment he had like a loft downtown, and he had to go um, fix something real quick at one of his establishments he had at the time because somebody called him or whatnot. He left her in the house, son, until he got back, and after that. She goes to the pregnancy and, and delivering the baby. <laughs> I'm like, girl, were you a one night stand? Were you a one night stand? And you felt like, shoot, I'm going to get this man. I'm going to keep this man. And that's how you got pregnant. Okay. By opening up them legs, them legs opening. Every time you found out something new that Dennis had. And he was getting or, or getting himself well established financially. And you just saw yourself in it. Girl, I'm like. You be in it to win it with these men, honey. You be in it to win it. But you always come up short. And why is that, Portia? Why is that? But anyway, guys. That's all I had. That's Okay, that's when they were outside. of When they first met each other for the first time. They both appeared on season five. And they were outside arguing. Uh, about, you know, her mispronouncing her title. And this, that, and the third. And I don't know. I think Kenya was calling her stupid and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but stupid is what stupid does you know what i'm saying but yeah that was the part though they were uh kind of almost had the same dress a little bit just kenya's was like strapless but yeah so that's all i had for the video what would y'all do if y'all was on a set filming guys and somebody did all that stuff with them was props which y'all would be irritated. Would y'all take matters into your own hand and solve the issue? Or would you tell the people that's supposed to be taping y'all and responsible for the scene to get that mess out that got your face before it becomes an issue for the negative? Which I would have been like that. Because that would have been me. I would have just told them, we, we can't film no more. Especially if y'all want me. Because we ain't finna have these shenanigans. No, man. I don't have a prop. Because I had a same bull. Huh? No, hell I wouldn't. Because both of them would get on my nerves if I would try to use them. So, nah. I was just like, I'm going off set. Until y'all can get this situation handled correctly and appropriately. I will not be taping. So, y'all think about what y'all going to do. But those props are not going to be a part of this scene. Or the, the remainders of the scene. Okay. But, you know, Portia was young at the time. And Andy was using those black women the way he wanted to use them. Because Cynthia was much older. She should have said, well, this is not appropriate. We cannot have 
uh, two women up here with props, one with and the other one without, and it's just being too much of a distraction. You know, Cynthia definitely being the elder, and I think Nene could have said some as well, to get this stuff under control. But see, you can see Cynthia, she's just shocked as hell and trying to figure out what Portia going to do next. You know, and then she really felt something about it because she tried to ease up off this sofa. And I was like, no, nah, they should, man, it, they should have made Cynthia a sandwich. They should have been on top of each other, rolling on the floor with Cynthia in the middle. Because ain't no way in the hell I'm going to be between two women, they arguing and carrying on. And one of them got props and whatnot. And I'm hearing that shit just as loud as the one she's trying to offend. No, ma'am, no son of the Lord. I would have got up from that situation. I would have sat on that little that little cushion thing sitting over there. Right there, little thing right there. That little gray, little separator. A little piece. I would have been sitting right down. <laughs> Saying, y'all better get these women. I'm too old for this shit. Y'all better get them. Can I have a glass of wine? <laughs> That's what I would have said. Cause my, my, my brain is, is fried right about now. My, um... Stress level has went through the roof. Do anybody got some something to cool me down? Popsicle, some hell. Popcorn. It's intermission time. <laughs> but that's all I got for this video, guys. I'll see y'all next time. Bye bye.